Hello everyone. Good good morning. This is Dr. Arun Kumar and I'm going to say something on of types of foundations in the building. Foundations. So the objective of this video lecture is to know the constructions of foundation, to know the different types of foundation, to know which type of foundation is suitable for the types of soil. First, we need to define foundation. The definition of the foundation is the one which holds the superstructure or with, withstand the superstructure. The structure can be broadly classified into two, the substructure and the superstructure. The substructure is the one which is cannot be seen by the human eye or, or the structure which is below the ground level that is called a substructure or the foundation the superstructure the structure which is visible to the normal human eye it consists of wall doors windows parapet wall and rcc slab so the foundation can be defined as the lowest part of the structure which is constructed below the ground level the main function of the foundation is to transmit the load of the weight of the superstructure which is above the soil to the ground broadly generally the types of foundation can be classified into two based on the depth and the width of the foundation so it can be classified into two first one is the shallow foundation in which depth is less than or equal to breadth the second one is the deep foundation where the depth is greater than or equal to breadth. From this figure, it is clearly known, it is clearly seen that from the ground level, T represents the depth and B represents the width. Further, if we want to classify the shallow foundation, it can be classified into four: wall foundation, isolated column foundation, combined foundation, mat or raft foundation. Secondly, the deep foundation can be classified into pile foundations, under rimmed pile and well foundations. So this picture clearly shows the shallow foundation and this is the depth and this is the width of the foundation. And this is after laying the foundation. When we uh, see the first type of foundation is wall foundation and this is a typical foundation trench which is available below the ground level and this is the rammer and in which it can be compacted a sand or a pieces of bricks can be compacted in order to make a solid substrate and a, a concrete can be done and after that process a layer of PCC along the wall can be constructed and this is a simple example for a simple wall foundation and secondly the wall foundation can can have a footings a footing can be constructed of using a reinforced cement concrete as shown as in the figure and this is plain cement concrete and first footing second footing and then comes the wall and this is an example for a stepped foundation isolated footing the main purpose of isolated footing is to provide under the column to transfer the load safely to the bed soil or the hard rock stratum these footings may be slab stepped or sloped ones this is an example for an isolated footing or isolated footing as you can see the depth and this is the hot stratum in which the load can be transferred transferred to the subsoil and this is the stage in which the reinforcement is laid and workers are doing concreting and this is 
the foundation after concreting. An isolated column, an isolated column foundation can be laid after the lay after laying the layer of PCC footing. Then comes the column in which the load can be transferred from the beam to the column and column to the footing and footing to the PCC and PCC to the subsoil. The main purpose of uh, adopting combined footing is the one which supports two columns and it may be rectangular or trapezoidal in plan. The aim is to get uniform pressure distribution under the footing. For this, the center of gravity of the footing area should coincide in the center of the gravity of the combined loads of the two columns so that the load can be gradually transferred into the subsoil. Combined footing are used in the following situations when the columns are very near to each other so that their footings overlap. When the bearing capacity of the soil is less, requiring more under more area under the individual footing. When the end of the column is near a property line so that its footing cannot spread in the direction. Combined footing. When we see the combined footing, as it is evident from the fact that when the when the space between the two footings are closer, we can follow combined footing. And combined footing can be of a square or a trapezoidal in plan. So this the C represents a column, and the center of the column and the center of the adjacent column are the same line. And when we see the elevation, this is the elevation of this combined footing. Next to combined footing, the other most commonly uh, used foundation is mat foundation, in which it is suitable when the soil in the site for the proposed construction structure is erratic. Means it will have a soft clay or in which the settlement of foundation can be possible. In other words, the same bearing capacity or bearing capacity of the soil will be low. So in such cases, mat foundation can be adopted. Mat foundation can be constructed by using RCC slab covering the whole area of the bottom of the structure. The slab provided with the steel reinforcing bars in both directions. When column loads are heavy, the main beams and secondary beams are provided monolithically with the raft slab. So this is this picture shows an example for a mat foundation in which a complete reinforcement for the particular length, width and breadth of the mat is laid and a concreting is done. And after concreting, individual column, individual provision for the reinforcement for the column is adopted. So this is an example, this is the plan of the mat foundation in which this is the main beam and this is the secondary beam and this is the column which is circular in shape. When we see the elevation, this is the elevation of this particular mat foundation. First the layer of PCC bed, in general term PCC bed is laid, above that RCC slab for the desired load bearing capacity is constructed then main beam so that load from the column is transferred to the main beam then to the RCC slab then to the PCC slab the second major classification of foundation is the pile foundation pile foundation is more commonly used in the building where the loads of the superstructure is heavy and it is distributed uneven the topsoil has poor bearing capacity the subsoil water level is high and there is a large fluctuation in the subsoil water level and if a canal or a deep drainage lines exist near the foundation this pile foundation can be adopted this pile foundation can also be adopted for the structure located in the sea or near the seashore or the river bed the classification of pile foundation based on its function the first one is end bearing piles second one is the friction piles third is the compaction piles fourth is the tension piles and the last one is the anchor piles and the classification based, uh, based on the material and the composition are concrete piles which can be of precast that 
is cast in the site, then Q then, then can be constructed on the site. Cast in situ is the no traditional way of construction. Then timber piles, third one is the steel piles, and which will have H shape, H pile, pipe pile, sheet pile, and a composite will be of concrete and timber. Second is concrete and steel. This picture clearly shows the end bearing pile in which in the layer of soft soil a pile can be rammed into the earth. And this pile transfers the load from the superstructure to the end to the hard strata. The second one is the friction pile which used to transfer the loads to the depth of the foundation by load carrying a capacity by means of skin friction along the length of the pile. The third one compaction file. These piles are used to compact the loose soil, thus increasing their bearing capacity. The compaction piles themselves do not carry any load. Hence, they may be of weaker material. The pile tube driven into the driven to compact the soil is gradually taken out and the sand is filled in place, thus forming a sand pile. This figure shows a concrete pile and a steel pipe of different shapes. And this is the compaction file in which the layer of the soft soil is compacted by means of this pile. The second one is the unrimmed pile. This unrimmed pile will be followed in the place where blackout and soil and other expansive uh, expansive soils exist. The building often creates crack due to the relative settlement of the ground movement or the ground movement. This is caused by alternate swelling and shrinking of, shrinking of the soil due to the changes in the moisture content because it is well known fact that black cotton soil expands due to the absorption of water or the moisture and contracts when it is dried up. The underlying pile is used to safeguard this movement effectively. Generally, this foundation is used for the machine foundation, factory building, transmission line towers, and other tall structures also. This is an example where this particular pile foundation is adopted in black cotton soil. So first, the hole will be drilled from the ground level to the certain depth then unrimmed pile equipment will be used and this is how an unrimmed pile will be executed in the site and it will be moved like this to create necessity depth and the width for unrimmed pile foundation then concreting can be done either in cast situ or cast in situ using the reinforcement and using pumpable concrete. Next to uh, underim pile foundation, well foundation is adopted. Well foundation is adopted by using materials like timber, metal, and reinforcement concrete or machinery with which open both and which is open both at the top and the bottom, and it is issued for the building and for bridge foundation. The types of well foundations are based on the shapes are circular, rectangular, double D, twin circular. So this picture will depict how the well foundation can be constructed. First, it is excavated to a certain depth and the concreting can be done as shown as in the figure. This is the cutting edge, the curve and staining. Then concreting can be done on the layer to provide a hard substratum where the load can be transferred. Then sand, sand filling is done. Then the layer of top plug is laid. Then well cap is constructed. After that, pier is constructed by use of RCC reinforcement and concrete. 
so this is an example for well foundation which is adopted for a particular bridge that across the river this is another example for well foundation and this is example uh, this figure shows a particular example for a framed structure so first individual or isolated for uh, pcc foundation is laid which is shown in gray color then isolated footing is laid then it is connected by means of beam an individual column is constructed by constructor and this is a typical rcc slab about the column in this example for a building with a foundation and thank you for listening to this lecture